This is the story of a musical journey. It began at a concert in this hall in Weimar on the 15th of July 2000, when Karim Said, aged 11, and at the invitation of Daniel Barenboim, played Mendelssohn's Rondo Capriccioso. Now that's a pretty big virtuoso piece, but it begins with two pages of slow chords. And I would say he'd played 10 or 12 of those chords when I said to myself, how is it possible for an 11-year-old boy to create so much magic out of a few slow chords? And in exactly that moment, Daniel Barenboim leant on my shoulder and said, what you cannot learn, he already knows. We decided, or I decided, that we ought to try and make a film about this talent that already knows. Six years later, he's been invited back to the same hall at the Belvedere Music School in Weimar to play Beethoven's second piano concerto with the school orchestra under their conductor, Nicolas Pasquet. Karim Saeed has been playing the piano with flair since he was five years old and winning international prizes from the age of nine. Now, at the age of 11, he has left home for the first time to study at the Purcell School near London, one of the most prestigious music schools in England. The biggest single step in his journey so far. about 30% of our students coming from overseas. Often they're referred to us by some very talented musicians, but I have to say it's rather rare that a musician as eminent as Daniel Barenboim uh, appears in front of the audition panel as a reference for a candidate. So we were all very excited when we heard about uh, Kareem and read a glowing reference from Maestro Barenboim. put down all my practice to one hour, 50 minutes would be classical and 10 minutes would be jazz. And uh, what I would do is I'll get, either, either work it out by ear, or I'll get um, a copy from the real book, which is something that only gives you the melody and guitar chords on top. And I make my own uh, version on it. 
and it's fun just because it doesn't have a teacher to boss me around. So, but I have my own thing to do without anyone interfering. <laughs> and then I go and I, I get to boss the trio around because I'm the pianist, and the pianist's job in a trio is to boss people around. <laughs> so it's great fun. <laughs> strong E flat chord yes. to know that you've made the change because sometimes you're using the inversion and it's very difficult for me to tell. Yes. Yeah. Well maybe not that obvious, I'm not deaf, but it's just <laughs> it, it is just it is just that if you go early that's fine, no I'll follow you, but then you've got to make it obvious that that's exactly what you're doing because it's only obvious after about four bars. Sorry. Okay. I can't see this. Okay, should we do the final head? Okay, I'm Karim Saeed, I come from Jordan and I'm 12 now. Now at the moment I'm in Lithuania, Kaunas for an international competition where I'm going to embarrass myself. <laughs> I've been here once in 1999, two years ago. Luckily that wasn't a competition, it was a festival. This year it's a competition. What do you think of competition? I think that if I'm not in one, there very good to go and sit in the audience and it's inter interesting to see who wins and who loses and what the jury think and what I think or what the audience thinks. Uh, but when it comes to actually participating in one, <laughs> I have a different opinion. <laughs> Thank you. 
The octaves in Mendelssohn, towards the end and in the middle, were not very clean when I first came. And I got really worried about that because I didn't realize it was untidy. But when I tidied it up, I realized how untidy it was. So I, the octaves were not so accurate. I would actually hit other notes other than the notes I was generous, so I give more notes than it's actually wanted, three or four instead of two, and so I shrunk them down to two, and, and now I'm playing exactly what Mendelssohn wants, hopefully. <laughs> I never have problems before concerts. I'm usually very, very calm. But this time, I'm nervous because I have been here once from before and I've seen the standard. And it's quite high and it's very, very competitive. So I'm extremely nervous. So do you feel better about it now? Yeah. <laughs> I do. Miss your parents? Yeah. Well, no. Yes. In the middle. Because I see them every few months, so there's no point missing them. It'll just make things worse. I don't have time to miss them. I call them once a week and we, I just tell them what's happening and they tell me what's happening and until next week. And I see them every three, three months, three, four months. I never had problems with my family. He's a very warm human being. He's very helpful, and he likes family life. He's very concerned about all the members of his family. And uh, he loves his brother so much. He had been alone without a brother or sister for the first eight years of his life. And uh, when he knew that I was pregnant with my second son, and the first thing he said, will I be like all the other children now? And then I said, yes. When did you first become aware 
of his musical talent? Uh, at the age of five, I had a friend called Maha who used to take her children to this Russian piano teacher called Agnes Bashir. And then she said, why don't you come and uh, try to give him some lessons? I said, okay. It was a little bit hard for me <laughs> at that time because I was really, really busy. But it was probably that moment, lucky moment, I would say, <laughs> when I met Karim and Karim met me. And once she, the teacher, um, talked to Basim and I about having a special program, she said, I think this child has a special talent. Why don't we try something different? Then I suggested parents, Dina and Basim, that I can try with him program, which normally used for protégés. So if they don't mind, and thanks God they didn't mind, <laughs> it was uh, real cooperation. Of course we said okay. And once Karim and I were sitting and talking, and I said, Karim, why don't you try to memorize the piece? We could go anywhere at you know, in any hotel there would be a piano or at any gathering, and if you memorize the piece, it'll be like carrying your own book in your head all the time. So he said, okay, I'll try. And then he learned the whole piece. And of course we went to Beirut once and there was, we were at a hotel and there was a piano and he sat and he performed in front of everybody and he felt really good. And uh, on the other hand, his teacher was working with him uh, on this special program, and by that time she had discovered his talent. And she kept on giving him more, and the more she gave him, the more he took, and the more he practiced. I noticed for him that every lesson of music was something very special for him. He was preparing for these lessons. He was listening to me for every movement I say, for every word I say, it was full reaction and endless love for music. And this is how it started. When he was living here in Amman, people could not really understand his talent and his passion for music. You know, he'd be somewhere practicing while the other boys would be uh, in the soccer team or basketball or maybe there was a bit of jealousy. Every time he would go on TV or have a concert, some of the kids would uh, annoy him a little bit at school. But he would come back home really hurt. But now that he's in England, I think he, he is where he belongs. You see, some mothers try to live their lives through their children because that's the way, they have no other choice. But Karim, I'm sure, will feel more comfortable if he knows that I have my own interests, my own talents, my job and my own life, and then we can be side by side rather than my choking him with my love. And I think this is a better kind of love when you walk side by side. Many superstars exaggerate in their glory because they are compensating for very deep, unresolved issues in their lives. And I think that we, I would like to try to help Kareem develop in a way that there are no unresolved issues. Everything is, comes out to the surface and that even if he becomes very famous, he would still be um, a modest person and he wouldn't want to hide behind all this uh, glory thing and uh, superstar illusion and that he would really be proud of just Kareem and the piano and music. Uh, 
I feel happy for him, very happy for him. And this is what helps me cope with my own feelings. What are those feelings? Well, I miss him when he's gone and uh, I know that uh, There's a certain part of his life that I'm excluded from, and I have to respect that. And have you thought about what it will mean to you if he becomes an international pianist constantly roaming around the world? Maybe I would get to travel a little bit more often. <laughs> Tag along. <laughs> Talent is gift, actually. It's a gift. But uh, Karim has a beautiful combination. Intelligence, charisma, and talent. All together, this is what a good performer needs.
Kellogg. You'll have to do it to the end. I'll do it now. I had a memory lapse. I had a very big uh, memory lapse. Yeah. And um, because of my jazz background, the, the moment I had this memory lapse, I, the immediate reaction, without me even thinking, which is very stupid in classical music, was to improvise around it and go back to the home key and continue. When it has happened to me in Amman, it did happen in the Bartok piece, but it was not that bad because, well, it was Bartok. So, and, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and I improvised around it and I got, got away with it. But this time, because Beethoven has much stronger harmonies and much stronger structure than um, our friend Mr. Bartok, we, um, I couldn't get away with that. And so I just embarrassed myself and I got some really jazzy things. Uh, so I just stopped. I just stopped. I think it seemed a lot longer to me than it was actually. It actually it probably didn't last any time, really. Uh, well, my hands went off. There was yes, no sound. There wasn't it? Yeah. And I uh, picked myself up and I went to the end. But, you know, from that point on, it was obvious. Out. <laughs> Having failed the audition for one competition because of his memory lapse, he's now going to another with his teacher, Tessa Nicholson, at the Austrian Institute in London. Where are you going now and why? Um, this is the Beethoven competition and I'm here because Tessa entered me. <laughs> so was it Tessa's idea or the school's idea or your idea? Was it your idea? Yes, it was. Yes, it was Tessa's idea. Two years ago, Karim said that he thought competitions were very good for sitting in the audience, but he wasn't so keen about going in them. Has that changed? <laughs> <laughs> no, it hasn't. <laughs> it's still the same. Are you nervous? No, but I'm not. No, no, I'm, I'm excited. I'm not nervous. I'd like to have a diminuendo so that the sudden fortissimo with the with the winds would be sudden. I want a, I want there to be a surprise. I don't want it to be a build up. So make sure that when we start with the it's much softer because that should be a surprise. And that's what happened all the time. So let's just make sure we do that right. Please do not leave baggage unattended.
Tell us about what you've learned from Daniel Barenboim. He really opened my ears, opened up something inside me that made music completely my life. Not, not through words, not through anything directly, but through his work, through his extraordinary ability to concentrate, extraordinary ability to make everybody else around him concentrate. A combination of inspiration, a combination of great craftsmanship. I never play as well when I'm not with him. It's somehow, most of the time when I'm with him, I play to a different level because he forces me to really not leave anything. You can't get away with anything with him. You can't fool Daniel Barenboim. The things he taught me about music, I can't learn from anybody else. It's only him. Because he has such a unique way of executing music that uh, really has been imprinted into my musical character and I just feel very lucky. Letter F, letter F um, wins, you're too loud over there. <coughs> Woodwind and bass, you're too loud over there, it's only one F. I would actually like to hear the, stri the strings over here. And then, at, when in 200 and 205, is that right when you have pa -pa -da -pa -pa -da -pa -pa? that's when I want to hear you, or the brass, actually the brass at 205. And then, at uh, 211, that's when you should, woodwinds should come out most, please, okay? Um, let's just go over that once, please, from letter F. What is the name of this orchestra? Beethoven, Beethoven Orchestra. Orchestra. And who called it the Beethoven Orchestra? Kareem. 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 <laughs> Whose catchy. idea was it? Kareem. Kareem. Kareem's, Kareem's idea. Has it turned out to be easier or more difficult than you it, expected? It got harder as it went along. Why? Um, because the numbers got bigger and the, the pieces got harder. I mean, I didn't expect... I knew Beethoven 7 was hard, but I didn't think about how hard it was. It uh, slapped me on the face, really. <laughs> I found out how hard it was the hard way. very charismatic and very persuasive as a person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll run up and he'll grab you in the middle of the corridor yeah. and say, Mandy, would you like to come to the rehearsal tonight? And could we just have 15 minutes to look over Boeing's for the Beethoven? And, and have you got any ideas about this? And he just, he's very sweet. And yeah. is, he, is he good to work with? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's very yeah. funny. Yeah, he's funny. He's very funny. I, yeah. I, I guess uh, I joined the orchestra because I thought it's pretty good that he's managed to organise all of this and that yeah. he's so interested in mm -hmm. doing it. And it's sort of crazy and having a school full of musicians and not using them as much as you can. So I see the logic in where it's working. I think it's pretty come out pretty yeah, well. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. You can see it in the way that on so Tuesday in our rehearsal, he um, had us all concentrating to such a high degree and we were all together, we were all playing musically mm. and it made all your hairs go up in your arms yeah. and you were like, Oh wow, this is that bit in the second. That bit in the oh, second, second movement. movement. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gets you every time. We'll play out of tune. 
No, no, the bit with um, the, the Fugato. Yeah, oh, the oh, Fugato oh, is fantastic. And the opening of the second, oh, it's just... With the cello and violas. Yeah. yeah. It's always yeah. the best with the cello and the violas. <laughs> so can you just make, make sure that it's going forward? Yes, the first one should be a little bit stronger than the next one. But don't exaggerate it as much as you did, because it's not an authentic Bach performance. So can we just go going towards the next ornament, please? A little bit more romantic. I feel like he knows my part as well as I know my part yeah. as well. Like um, he conducts your memory. Yeah, he yeah. conducts your yeah, memory, which is completely cool. amazing. <laughs> and he, he says, you know, I know all your entries by heart. And I think that's just incredible that he knows ev where everyone is in their part as well. Mm -hmm. so. Well, as long as he doesn't make us play for memory, so right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think with Kareem, he's got such passion for Beethoven that he mm -hmm. can pull it off. the symphony when I went to rehearsals to the symphony it was the first time I was 10 9 9 or 10 it was the first time I'd seen a proper orchestra it was in Germany and so that's when I decided I want to conduct and two years later I started having lessons but I still remember every single detail about the first time I remember I remember so it's a special symphony that's why I uh, didn't care about how hard it was <laughs> Janacek. I'm playing Janacek tonight, which is a, a little bit scary to bring Janacek to Prague, but <laughs> because everybody knows the music so well, I guess there's seems to be a lot of uh, a lot of pride for Janacek, Dvorak, and, and Smetna here. People are obviously familiar with the music.
London, with his father Basim, to assess his progress so far and to seek advice from the London teaching institutions about where his journey should take him next. Basically, there are two main questions which I'm asking various people. First question is, should Karim go to university or to a conservatoire? The second question is, which country should he study in? Should it be here in the UK or in the US? We both know that he's very happy here in England at the school, Purcell School. And we can see how happy he is. And in fact, he feels more at home here than he does in Amman. And when he, he comes to Amman, he says he's homesick for school in, in, in England. Now with the pause. That's a bit faster, but that's the idea. I'm, I was trying to get you to pay attention to me because not, not once have you looked at me. Really, make sure the eyes are there. And you are the first to introduce this thing. And again, we say this again. Fourth, fourth semiquaver. Articulate the left hand. Okay. I'm sorry I overran. Thank you. Good luck in the concert, everybody. Every year at the Purcell School, we have a competition for composers. We invite any interested composer in the school to produce a short score for consideration in, in the annual Purcell School concert. This is a very special concert, this one at the Academy, and it's one that everybody takes very seriously. And they have this opportunity once a year, and Karim has composed his piece, or he composed the sketch of it, in fact, to show us in the first instance, which he did at the piano, um, with great gruntings and groanings and saying, this goes like this, and this will be here, and, um, but gave us enough of, a, of an idea, and, the, and he showed us his workings so that we could understand something about what we thought was going to take shape. And so we chose him, the composition department headed by Alison Cox at the school. 
and then he started work in earnest to make it become a fully symphonic piece, which we have tonight. It's a very impressive effort. I think Karim, from his work with orchestras, knows a great deal about the combination and balance of instruments, and he has made some very strong decisions, which I feel have worked very well. I really did it one weekend. I put all the all the ideas that I had scribbled down over the, the last three months in January. I said, right, I have to do this this weekend. And Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, the short score was ready. And then it took me another three weeks after that. So roughly a month. Karim's a marvellous student to have in the school because every time we have a composer's concert, he comes up to me and he says, Miss Cox, are there any pieces that need conducting? And I, there's usually something in a mess, you know, composer with parts all over the place with, and doesn't know what they're going to do with it. So I say to Karim, please could you look after this or that? And he will go and take, get the players, he will organise rehearsals, he'll sort out the piece and he'll conduct it in the concert. He's incredibly useful. It's almost like having another member of staff around. It's been a good experience. I learned a lot. What, what, what sort of piece is it? How do you describe it? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Needs work. <laughs> Watching my piece being performed was an exciting experience, that's for sure. Because uh, just the fact that other people were interpreting the music that I had written reminded me of what I do with other people's music. And the whole process, watching the whole process, made it clear to me what I do as a performer. The, the, the process of them interpreting my piece um, it just shows that there's no, there's no definite interpretation to anything. And that itself opened up my mind as, as, a, as a piano player. I, I appreciated that, but I wasn't allowed to conduct it, which is very disappointing for me. <laughs> you wanted to conduct it as well? Yes, yeah, that's the other reason why I wrote the piece, is because I wanted to conduct it. And uh, I want, I'm, as a conductor, with my new teacher as well, I'm working on so-called conducting technique, which appa apparently exists. And um, that's why I wrote it as well, so that the interpretation would be my one. But uh, it didn't work out logistically, so I benefited from it from other ways as well. And how close has it come when you heard it in rehearsal this afternoon? I mean, heard it for the first time. How close did it come to how you imagined it when you were writing it? The one th this is probably the thing that I'm proud of. Um, without, uh, that the fact that the instruments, I heard the instruments right from the start, and when I heard it for the first time, there were no surprises. I knew how everything was going to sound, and it sounded that way. That's the only thing I'm proud of. But the whole piece itself, I'm, I can't say that I am proud of it, because, well, I just feel that there's so much more to be done, but I learned from it, and that's the most important. I'm always very impressed by the results he gets from other pupils' pieces when he conducts them. And, um, no, I shall miss him when he leaves, certainly. And when he leaves, where will he go? This pianist, composer, conductor and jazz man. He has embarked on a journey which, if the gods are willing, will go on unfolding for another 50 years or more. His successes so far have been as promising as they have been impressive. He has won eight international prizes starting at the age of nine. But much more importantly, he has already brought the joy of music to thousands of people. And he has a special gift for making music speak to people. His two latest prizes were won here in Weimar at the Franz Liszt competition and have earned him an invitation to play both a piano recital 
and Beethoven's second piano concerto with the Belvedere School Orchestra under their conductor, Nicolas Pasquet. that Kareem will grow up to be a fulfilled human being, no matter what he does. And that even if he becomes very famous, he would still be a modest person, and that he would really be proud of just Kareem and the piano and music. <laughs> <laughs> 